All right, in this video, we're going to carry on with uh, chapter 13.4, which is the equation of motion. Oh, it's actually right here. The equation of motion, rectangular coordinates. Okay, and I've just selected this one. I mean, this, this example, you can go and have a look at it yourself. Um, let me just zoom in a bit. All right. So what do we have here? We have a projectile. Okay, it's a 10 kilogram projectile. Like a projectile there is fired vertically upward. Okay, what do you notice there? Vertically upward. We're looking at straight line. Okay, straight line motion from, okay, vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. Okay. Um, determine the maximum height. So we're looking for height information uh, to which it will travel. If what? There's two, two conditions here that we need to solve for. If atmospheric resistance is neglected. Okay. So if we're neglecting any drag due to the, to, to the air or to wind. And B, well, we need to determine the height if B, atmospheric resistance, is not neglected and is measured as, as this. But we'll get to this in a moment, okay? So the first one is what we've, what we've done before. We just sh shoot this projectile up. And um, what we did before in Chapter 12 is we only studied the kinematics, meaning we only studied its, po we could, its position, its velocity, and its acceleration. But now we are given mass information and essentially we are we are we are given force information and from the force information we need to determine height what is height height is kinematic information right so we we have force information and we need to determine height okay so what how are we going to do that well let's Let's have a look. So we need to first relate force to acceleration, all right, using our kinematic equation. Then we take our acceleration and we determine our height from the acceleration. Okay, so that's the idea. But the first thing we need to do is we need to draw a free body diagram. Okay, so there is our, our projectile. It has a mass of 10 kilograms. What are the forces acting on this projectile as it goes up? And there's no atmospheric resistance. The only force will be mg. That's it. All right. So it's moving up. But the only force acting on this particle is mg. Okay. So now let us go. Remember, this is what I said. We, we first need to relate F to A, and then we take A and we calculate H. All right? So, we know this is our equation of motion. Some of the forces, some of the forces in the vertical, the Z, is equal to mass times acceleration in the Z direction. Okay? What are all the forces acting on it? It is only mg here. It's only mg and it's down. So, we, we choose up up as positive okay as you can see there it says up is positive so because mg is mg is acting down this is minus 98 comma 1 98.1 so on the left hand side we have all the forces acting on the particle and the only force we have is this 98.1 that's acting down mg and it equals to mass times acceleration what is the mass we know the mass has given us 10 kilograms times, times acceleration. And we solve for our acceleration, which is minus 9.81 meters per second squared, which is um, expected. We didn't expect anything else. Well, maybe you did, or maybe you didn't know what to expect. But this makes sense, right? Um, it's projectile motion, and the acceleration will always be 9.81 down if we neglect drag. Okay. So now, remember the big picture. Let's wait for it to focus. 
We started off with our equation of motion. We solved for our acceleration. Now, now we have kinematic information. We need to use that kinematic information to solve more kinematic information. Okay? So what do you notice about this? It's constant. All right? It's constant. But remember, what we're trying to do is determine the maximum height here, the maximum height. So now we've got the acceleration. It's constant. Now we can determine the maximum height. How? By using one of our constant acceleration equations. Remember, we can only use these types of equations. Remember, go to page 8 in your textbook and see what I'm talking about. The constant acceleration equations. Okay, and so we have, what do we have? We've got acceleration information. We have velocity information. That's our initial velocity. We, we're looking for height information. Okay, height information. So we need to find one of these equations which can relate those variables. So what will our, we, we've got, we can use this equation. V squared is V0 squared plus 2AZ minus Z0. That that will relate those variables. What is our final velocity? Zero at the maximum height. Our final velocity is zero. What's our initial? It was 50. What is our acceleration? It's minus 9.81. What's our final height? That's our h. Our initial height is zero. And we can solve for this. Okay? So there we go. I hope you guys picked up this idea of first... We draw the free body diagram, make sure that we know which forces are acting on it. Then we can set, we can get this kind of idea of let's relate the forces to the acceleration and let's relate the acceleration to the height. Now, just quickly, quickly, part B says we now we, we have this, this force as well. This is our drag force. Fd is 0 0.01 V squared. Okay, that's another force that's acting on the particle. So first step, go to your free body diagram. Okay, free body diagram. We've got this mg here and we've got fd. And they're both acting down. Okay, so make sure you know that this force is acting down because it's, it's always resisting the motion of the particle. So the particle is going up, so this drag force wants to resist it. Okay, so now we've got two forces. Again, we set up our equation of motion, but now we've got these two forces acting. There's our drag force, and there's our mg force. Okay, and that equals mass times acceleration. Then if we solve for acceleration before, remember before we got a constant, but now we, don't, we do not have a constant acceleration. A is now a function of velocity. Can you see that? A is a function of velocity. But we now need to use this information to still to determine our height. So we've got A is a function of velocity, but we're looking for height information, position information, right? So which equation from first principles relates these three to each other? It's going to be ADS equals VDV. Do you recall that one? Okay, ADS equals VDV. A is a function of V, so I've got A and V, and I'm looking for S information. Okay, so um, essentially that's what we have here, and our acceleration is given by this. There's our acceleration, right? A, DS, now we're using Z, is VDV. A, Here's A, DZ is VDV. We separate variables. We need to bring this over to this side, right? We need to bring this over to that side because we've got V on this side. And we integrate and we get this. Okay? I'm not going to go into the details. And we calculate H equals 114 meters, which is smaller than 127 over here, which makes sense, right? Because... We have an extra force that is that is pushing this down. Okay, guys, so I hope this helps. I hope you're getting the big picture and learning how to relate force to acceleration and then, then acceleration to any other kinematic parameter you're looking for. Cheers.